Hi guys, it's Wayne here with Living With Bikes. Um, I'm working on the 750. All my mates keep saying to me, get the 750 back on the road, get the 750. So, we've started. Part 1. Uh, for anyone who's not sure what this looks like when it's all together, there's a picture. <clears throat> so like any project, um, the old saying is they've got to get ugly before they get beautiful. I always like to look at the engines and stuff because that's what I'm into. I love the look of it. So when the fairings come off, I still see the beauty in the in the bike. This will um, this will take a little while. Um, I want to do it properly. I don't want to just rush it, stick it on the road, give it a quick spray, and then you know make it look like it's been done up. So I'll pull the engine out, um, clean all the frame down, polish everything that needs polishing, try and do a really nice job. That's all you can really do, isn't it? You know, in, unless you send them off to professionals who, you know, don't do it for free. So um, we'll see how we go. Uh, I've done a few bikes before. You'll get to see my CBR, which I've just finished. So that'll come out for this summer. This is a um, 1988 Suzuki 750R or, or GSXR 750. It's an 88 model, which so they called this the Slingshot. It's a beautiful little bike. It's got a fairly short wheelbase. And it's one of the few bikes, when you go around a corner, at normal road speeds, it, it sort of makes you feel like you want to accelerate in the corner, unlike any other bike. I've got a few bikes, and none of them do it. This thing is such a tight little bike. Um, and I've even ridden a couple of friends of mine who have got, like, 06s and 07 and 08s. This thing still, for some reason, feels better around a corner than those. They'll kill this in a straight line for sure. Um, this is the water-cooled motor. It's the, I think it's like the second generation of the 750 that they did. The first one had narrower wheels. Motor was a bit different. Um, so this is what this is probably the start of the modern um, superbike sort of era. Um, when they did, I mean, they won a lot of races on this. This was a really, really successful platform, and it carried through. Uh, it carried through into the mid '90s, so it was a really good motorcycle, um, and I just love it. I love the look of it. I love the way it feels when, because you, you put this on, you don't ride it, you don't sit on it, you put it on. It's one of those type of bikes. Um, Taco starts at three grand. It makes you feel like you're on a on a racy bike. That's the sort of thing. You know, on this bike, what it does to you. Alright, I'm just trying to get some fairings off. It doesn't take much, it's not that hard to get them off. But it's just, uh, there's a lot of bolts. <laughs> so, we'll get the fairings off. That gives us a good look at everything. Here's my little, little box gone, here it is. I've got like a ton of these and it's got a lid on it and you can put the little locking things on it. So in case you knock it off the table, you don't go everywhere. Um, so, and I always put all my nuts and bolts in here because, guaranteed, you won't find it. The one you want later on. Okay, now it's starting to look ugly. The old signature twin headlights that these come out with. It's not really ugly, is it? And here's all the plastics. This is the bit that takes all the time, rubbing them down and getting them ready and then wondering why when the paint bubbles on them because there's a bit of crap left on them. Plastics, um, plastic can be quite awkward sometimes to paint. Um, it seems to be out of hold impurities and as soon as you paint them they go, ah, oh, he's painted, let's let him go and then they come out in the paint. But um, there's a couple of treatments we do which um, 
um, prevents that from happening so I always do that and I do use um, uh, the plasty stuff in the paint which lets them flex without cracking so a couple of things that you've got to do for plastics Hi guys, like I said at the start of this clip, the motor on this is air cooled and you can see those fins there. They must be, they don't look very big but they must be efficient. The thing that you do notice about this motorcycle, it's got a radiator, well it's got an air cooler, an oil cooler, big part, that's as big as a radiator on most bikes which are water cooled. So it just goes to show they were aware of the heat and they were going to do everything they could to get it out of the, the engine, which they did, they, they um, succeeded. Let me explain something about motorcycles and it's cars, it's anything you want to do up. This motorcycle in this condition is between sort of three and five thousand dollars. That's what it's worth if I wanted to sell it. This motorcycle in a1 tip top condition like showroom condition is worth between ten and twelve thousand dollars. The problem that we have is at the moment this motorbike, if you'd put it into a shop who specialised in restoration on motorcycles, it would probably cost you ten grand to have it done. The motorcycle is only worth twelve grand and you've probably paid between three and five to buy it. So at the moment this motorcycle is right on the cusp. It's not quite ready in its value to do up or have it done up by a professional um, but it's still in a motorcycle so a lot of people leave them as they are like this has been I haven't touched this, this, this bike since I bought it other than to polish it and clean it and so forth it, it's right on that tip now now for me I, I do this myself so I've you know got a sandblaster and I can do that and I can polish things on my buffing wheel and and, the, and I can buy components um, that need replacing, like this needs a, the throttle cable replaced on it because it gets just every now and then it's just a bit sticky, it just catches. So I'll replace it, so I can do all that. Um, and that's the point I'm trying to make is that these motorcycles at the moment, they're either really, really good, there's a couple of really, really nice ones I've seen that have probably been garage most of their life, and, and they're going for really good money. So, a motorcycle like this, this has got, uh, it's done 90,000 Ks. So it's not a, not a bike that hasn't been ridden, someone, you know, through its life has really give this a good ride. So now it's time that this motorbike, it needs, it, it just needs to be looked after and it needs to be um, brought back into, you know, showroom style condition. So that's why a lot of, a lot of guys do them. It, do it themselves because at the moment this bike isn't worth in as much that if you wanted to sell it straight afterwards it's not worth having someone to build it for you and there's a lot of great builders out there I've seen some bikes uh, last weekend um, that have been built by professionals and you just think wow you know like really top-notch jobs not to say that you can't do that at home it's just that it's going to cost you where this bike will probably have maybe two thousand dollars put in it and that's just buying hardware, parts, paint, you know, all the bits and pieces, little nuts and bolts that you need to match it. A sticker set, I've got a sticker set for this coming from the UK. Um, it's a proper company that does restoration stickers for all different bikes. It's $154 Australian. So there's those things and you can't get away from that. You've, you've got to pay the money to get those parts, which is fine. Um, and even like the professional guys, they have to still you know, buy those parts um, to put on put on the bikes when they're building them. So that's uh, just just a quick rundown on what these bikes are are worth. In as much that if you wanted to get one built for you, you're not going to get a return on it if you wanted to sell it. Now, hopefully, people who build them or get them built don't want to sell them. They want to ride them or just put them in your lounge room. It's got a mate of mine. It's got a motorcycle. Just sits in his lounge room. Um, that's what he wants to do. So, um, 
So that's what we're doing. Just a little, a little bit there for you to try and understand why some bikes are worth a lot more than others. And this bike's actually climbing up the ladder quite quickly because it is a, a, like a historic bike and it was raced and that sort of stuff. So there you go. Cheers.